Greetings. I've had some uh, requests to explain how I built my rotor blades. So I thought I'd do a little video showing how I did it. They're all on there now and have been tested and I'm quite happy with them. So the first thing I did was I made a sample to figure out how I was going to hold it to all together and how it was all going to work. Once I'd done that and decided on the design, I built, bought some stock and I bought it in a, it was ten, two lots of five meters and I chopped them in into two meter lengths. I clamped them together and I milled the ends so that they all came out the same length and they all weighed the same. Um, it's all done on this milling machine here, Bridgeport turret mill. So if you want to make these blades, that's the machine you need. So the next thing I've done once they're to the length and weighing the same was I drilled the holes and you can see all the rivet holes had to be drilled in there and that was easiest done when it was still in this form. So once I drilled all the holes in the milling machine the next step was to make these slots. Well it's a, it's a recess just so that the, the skin sits flush and that's just done with a, a standard end mill. Next thing I did was this slot in the back here. That was a ball nose end mill and I went nearly all the way but not I left the root unmachined because I wanted to, as much strength in the root as possible. Once I'd done that, the next thing to do was the profile. And the profile was done using this special end mill. Sorry about that. Uh, it's an end mill I have made especially to this profile and I was able to cut one side at a time and about 12 inches at a time. Um, in my milling machine vise, there's a, a support on the end of the milling table there. I had two of those to support it as much as possible. Uh, once that was done, then I had the skins made up. Um, this was a sheet of 2024 20, T3. I had it guillotined to the, the length and width I wanted. And they put this fold in the end as well. Just folded, I think it's 12 or 15 mil back, only a few degrees, so that it comes together nicely. The next thing I did was to punch these holes. They weren't drilled, they were punched and pre-dimpled. And they look like that. And they're pre-dimpled. And that uh, improves the strength and also allows the rivet to sit flush. Once that was done, I could then glue this section here and rivet at the same time. So I did one skin at a time. These are pot rivets, stainless steel countersunk, and uh, they pull it in nice and tight. But if you see my other video of the failure I had, next time I would put more rivets in. Um, that would have stopped it pulling apart because I didn't pre-bend this skin at all. This was straight and I when I'd done both sides, I pulled them together and that gave me a nice aerofoil shape that I wanted. Uh, once that had dried and I had it in my jig and I pulled the two skins together um, 
you see my other video of, of the jig it squished them together and the adhesive hold it in place so that I could then punch these holes and rivet them with solid rivets these are pot rivets but I use solid solid rivets on the um, on the actual blades see there that uh, it looks the same both sides so that's how I did that and that's about it so if you want to make these blades you need a milling machine like that you need a special tool made up to make that profile and you can do it and um, the, the strength you have to decide yourself um, I did it by using solid works. So I um, worked out the cross-sectional area of the blade and you can work out from the pounds per square inch that the material was rated at what the load capable carrying capability is uh, of this section and uh, they were built at fatigue strength so in theory, no matter how many cycles they're put under, um, they shouldn't fatigue. That's the, that's the theory anyway. Okay, that's about it. Cheerio.